Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about the art of listening. This speech is designed for you, and I'm really excited to be here. I'm so excited to bring you a great story. Who loves a great story? Excellent. And it's because we love good stories, we love to fully experience what's happening out there, that we want to become a part of it, that we really would like to listen. Let me show you. A great storyteller, Ernest Hemingway, once said, I like to listen. I have learned a great deal from listening. Actually, most of his novels and stories came from stuff he experienced in the war. He said, people never listen. And it's kind of true. I mean, we've all been guilty of not listening. Who in here has been in a conversation and hasn't really been listening? I have. You have. I mean, even better, who has been in a conversation where you're pretending to listen? Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yes. And you're just thinking, what's coming next? It happens. But it's only when we truly listen that we get into the story. And that's what Sonder is about. Sonder is the realization that each random passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as your own. And the only way to actually get to know the life of the passerby is to listen to him. That's the grand picture. Here's a picture of space. It doesn't show very well because of that light shining on the screen, but you all have seen pictures of the stars and the moons. And when we look at the vast galaxy, the billions, billions of stars that makes up the physical universe, we kind of feel very, very small, don't we? You think, yeah, what's my story in front of all of this? But that's the interesting thing. We all live in one physical universe. But if you look at each and every one's story, each and every one's world, we all are a little universe unto ourselves. We all have our own spiritual universe. We are spirits. And the way I experience the world is completely different to how you experience the world, to how you experience the world, to how everybody else experiences it. Right now, I'm looking at 300 different universes sitting in front of me, and what I'm thinking right now is, what is your story? And the only way I can find out what is your story, what is your story, is if I come, talk to you, and listen just to you. So, because we can't do that, because we'd be here until tomorrow, I'll just gladly share my story. My Sonder moment was three years ago, summer of 2015, where I was based in Idomeni at the border with the Greek uh, mission of Doctors Without Borders. The Syrian refugee crisis was at an all-time high, and I volunteered as a doctor to work there. Now, the situation was pretty, pretty tough. We had 1,000 refugees that would cross the border every day. Now, what we would do is we would drive down there, we would set up a little tent, and we would see 150 people um, per day, maybe sometimes 100, sometimes 150. We would always give first aid to women and children first, and then we would look at the males and other people. If something was very serious, we would send it to the hospital. If it was all right, we would just give them you know, some antibiotics, some painkillers, and send them off to continue their journey to Germany, to Sweden, to wherever they were going. Now, on that particular mission is when I listened. That's when the story with the sunglasses happened. Let me take you through it. What happened was I was sitting there in the tent. I had seen about 50 different people that day, and I really didn't have time to listen to each and every one because there were so many. They were coming in. I had two translators, one for Arabic, one for Farsi and Urdu. They would translate, what's the problem? Ah, oh, my knee hurts. Oh, I have a fever. And I would just give them the first aid, and they would go. At that point, I noticed this 70-year-old Syrian guy. He, his name was Anas. And I know this because I said, what's your name? He said, Anas. I said, all oh, right. He talks English. Excellent. So I was like, what happened? What's the problem? He's like, my eye. It's been painful and red for three days now. And it's true. He had an eye infection. So what I did is I took the eye drops that I had to give him for the eye infection. And I said, here, take this eye drops and have your father, your mother, put them on and change it twice a day so it gets better. And he said, no, my friend, I cannot do that. I said, why, what's the problem? He said, my father and my mother and my brother are all gone. 
in the war. That's when I really started listening to Anas. He had my full attention and he told me that one day he was on his balcony in Damascus watching TV with his brother and suddenly a bomb strike happened. He was left without a TV, without a balcony, and without a brother anymore. This guy had walked through Syria, through Turkey, taken the treacherous trip from the Mediterranean Sea to one of our islands in Lesbos, and then he was in front of me with his eye infection, and what am I supposed to do? Suddenly, my universe blew up. I was like, my life is so much easier. I'm so grateful for all the things I have that this guy didn't have because he was born somewhere else. I listened to his story and I realized I understood I had to do something more. So what I did is I said, I understand you don't have anybody to look over your eye, but you need to protect it. You're sleeping out in the wilderness. You need to protect it from infection. So you're going to put the drops and you're going to take these sunglasses. I put my sunglasses on his face and I said, you can keep them. He stood up and he gave me one of the best hugs I have received in my life. Thank you. And he crossed the border and off to Germany. The interesting thing is that after 17 days, I got a message on Facebook that I'm in Germany, my eyes fine, and I'm gonna start school to learn German, to start university next year. So that story was a very happy ending. And at that point, it really reminded me of a quote we listened back in medical school, which is from Hippocrates saying, medicine is of all the arts the most noble. I remember my teachers, they were telling me, when you diagnose somebody, taking their history and really listening to what's going on with the patient is 80% of the job. And because I listened to Anas and of what happened, I thought, actually, listening is of all the arts the most noble. When we listen to somebody, we actually give them respect. We give them importance. We allow them to be. And I thought, how am I going to talk to you guys about listening today? How are we going to be better listeners today when we leave this room? So what I've done is I've put together five easy steps so we can all start listening a little better. Number one, be present. In order to listen, you have to be there and listen to the person. Number two, intention. Intention means that you really want to listen. You are willing to listen to that person. Your attention is there, not on your phone, not somewhere else, there. Number three, duplicate. Duplicate is when you have something here and you make the exact copy over here. So if Bill says this, Joe understands this. Number four, to learn. Because when we listen, we might learn something new. And number five, to understand, which is the ultimate goal of listening. When you listen, you understand what's being said. Let's look at them one by one. Step one, be present. Now, listening is about being present. Like that gentleman there on the third row who's on his phone. Thank you, thank you for being present. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, obviously, in order to be able to listen, you have to have all your attention all your sound waves there. All this coloring here is to represent the sound waves that we receive from the environment immediately. I'll give you an example. If we close our eyes right now and you listen to the sound of my voice only, you can tell how big the room is, how high and how big the room is just from the sound of my voice. That's how rich our sound system is. It's better than any Dolby surround you've ever seen, I promise. And also, it's called present because it is a present. When I'm listening to you, it's a gift. The, one of the biggest gifts you can do, the gift of attention. So for that, I really want to say thank you today for giving you, me the gift of your attention. So thank you. thank you. Also, if you look at the words listen and silent, it's an anagram. They are spelled with the same letters. Look at it. Match the letters to listen and silent. It's the same letters, different word. So 
guess what? In order to listen, shh, you have to be silent. You have to wait to receive what's being said in order to continue the communication and reply. Step two, intention. This one is probably my favorite, and let me tell you why. You have to have intention to listen, and you have to give your attention while listening. That happens with being willing. The willingness to actually drop this, I'm sorry, the willingness to actually give your attention to the speaker. Let me give you an example of that point. Here we have a gentleman throwing a ball across to another gentleman. This guy has intention. He really wants to throw the ball. This guy has attention. He's waiting for the ball to be received. Very easy. Same thing with communication. When we see somebody talking, they have the intention, they want to say something, and she has attention. She's ready to receive what's being said. And of course you know this, duh, you have to be, you know, paying attention. But how many times have you been in a conversation where you said something and nobody listened? Not very nice. Because you had intention, you wanted to say something, nobody gave you attention. And that doesn't feel nice. So part of listening is having the willingness to have that message across and also receive the other's message. Step three, duplication. Now, duplication comes from Latin, from duplicare, which is to double. I'll give you a very quick example. Think of an elephant. Think of an elephant, its size, its color. You have a picture of an elephant, right? Perfect. Congratulations, you just did duplication. I had an image in my head of an elephant, and now it's in your head. That's what it is. It's to reproduce exactly and accurately in one's mind a concept or information that someone or something is trying to communicate. I'll say that again one more time. To reproduce exactly and accurately what I mean comes into your mind and you know what I mean. The concept or the piece of information that is being communicated. It's actually very technological. If you look in your pockets, you all have an iPhone, a smartphone, an Android, a cellular device that has this ability. The ability to actually turn on the Wi-Fi and transfer some data, a picture, a recording, from one phone to the other. Well, guess what? We might have this technology for 20 years now, but for thousands of years, all of us have the same technology. From my mind, a piece of information from my mind through voice can be transmitted into your mind by listening. Isn't that amazing? I believe that it's a great analogy and I want to show you the tips. When we're saying being present as a listener is like being online. You turn online your device, so you're being present. You're like, uh-huh. Intention, intention is when you're syncing the devices. When our devices are synced, they're ready to transfer data. So intention, attention, you're ready to talk. And duplication is when the transfer of data happens. When I tell you, good morning, and you tra that gets transferred, you're like, ah, good morning, right back. Step four, learning. Listening is learning. The Dalai Lama once said, when you talk, you're only repeating what you know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. To actually illustrate that for you, I have a very difficult graph, a very complicated graph to explain how that works. Are you ready? Let's do it. So I know this is a little difficult, but as you can see, we all have two ears and one mouth, and we should use them proportionally. You should listen more than you talk. You should inflow more data than you outflow. Finally, the fact is that when we're listening, we get new information, new data that we can process and come up with new ideas, come up with new ways to see the world. The world is giving you answers each day. So learn to listen. And by listening, you will learn. Final step, step number five, understand. Understanding is the key of listening. That's the goal. Because when I listen, I really want to understand what's being said. Let's look at a picture. Here, we can see there's a lot of listening going on. 
There's a doctor listening to a baby's heart. There's another one listening to a monkey's heart. They're both really trying to listen at the heartbeat. Also, we can almost listen the baby and the monkey doing that really cold touch voice like, ooh, can you listen to it? And it's because we understand the concept. What's happening between A and B is being understood right now from us. That's what we want when we're listening. When we're listening, there's a particular cycle of communication. Understanding happens between A and B. It never happens only on one side. For example, if Bill says to Joe, Joe, good morning. If Joe doesn't say anything, he will never know he got the message. So when he actually says, good morning, he has to receive it and say, oh, good morning back, good morning to you too. That's when the cycle completes. When you let somebody know, I heard you, I understand you, and I'm replying, I'm acknowledging what you said. This is probably the most important point in listening, what we all forget to do. Think back when your mom told you, I told you to wash the dishes. Yeah, because we didn't understand it. We didn't acknowledge it. We didn't tell her, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll do it later. Nothing. It just came. It never went back. We never had the full cycle. So if you want to take away something from this talk today, remember to close the cycle of communication. When you listen to something, try to understand and acknowledge it. Say back what's happening. And that brings me back to the story with the sunglasses. The f probably the first time when I really listened. Because when Anas told me his shocking story about what happened in the war and how he was going to Germany, I really listened. I really tried to understand him. And when my universe, which was this big, came in contact with his universe, I listened. Our universes started expanding. He became part of my story. I became part of his story. And that's really the most beautiful and important thing we can do today, tomorrow, as human beings, to connect, to listen to each other, so we can become greater, we can expand as spirits, as human beings, and make a mark in the world. Thank you for listening. And I think it's the point where I walk off stage, walk off stage, walk off stage, walk off stage, walk off stage. Walk off stage.